Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm bringing to you a new product from Chantecai. So last week I took a look at the, well a few days ago, I hope I'm going to be posting this today, we'll see, but I bought this foundation, but what really brought me to the site was this. I'm wearing the foundation today, by the way, and I still, I'm not sure about it, you guys, because I do feel that this oxidizes, but it certainly looks pretty on the skin when I first put it on, so jury's still out. And somebody had said to me, why didn't I use this powder, this balm powder? It didn't even occur to me because I have stacks of things here, but today I am wearing that and that helped to knock down the shine a little bit from my sunscreens and whatnot, but it still has that glow going on. But what I want to talk to you about is this. This is from their new spring collection, the Butterfly Collection, and this is the Butterfly Palette. It's so pretty. This is the box, of course, and the palette looks exactly the same. They also had some lipsticks that I wasn't particularly interested in. I also have, I feel, way too many lipsticks. The colors didn't look anything special, so I passed on that. But I got this. This is my first experience with their eyeshadows, save for this. And this is a totally different formula, I think. It's still a powder, but it's, it's, there's, I don't know, kind of a roughness to this. And this is Zebra. I think you can tell from the Zebra. But these are the palettes that they come out with every year. I think just once a year. I'm not sure if it's twice a year. There's another one out right now. I can't remember the name of it, but this is Butterfly. There she is. And see how everything gets dark when I do this? This is why I tape the other side of my mirror. It stopped doing it, but it's really annoying. So let's do a couple of swatches so you can see what's going on, and then we're going to put them on the eyes. This one, and this one. So this green will change colors to pink. It really is quite interesting. I hope that you'll be able to see that. And this, to me, is a darker taupe. And this is almost taupe. So let's do these two now. And there you go. I think there's a, several ways you can put these on. You could just use this color, this color, this color, this color. Full disclosure, I have tried these. When I first got them, I just, I used my fingers and put them on and it worked. They're so smooth. They're not necessarily creamy, but they're so smooth and so easy. You could truly apply these with your fingers. And then I shot a video yesterday, but I didn't like the light. My face seemed really dark, probably because this was flashing the camera all the time, and I decided not to post that. But I will show you a picture of what I did, and I'll talk you through it. So I did this green right in the corner all the way up, so about a quarter of the way. And then I added this color right here to help my hood out and recede it a little bit. This peach color all over the lid, this peach color is so beautiful. And then I decided to use this one just to line. And it just isn't dark enough to line. And it occurred to me, because when I look at this, I think, well, that might be too dark for the story. They made it so that it's not too dark for the story. So then I did a whole outer third kind of situation with that. And I thought it was very, very pretty. But I found that because I started with the green, maybe, it kind of went a lot further than I wanted it to go. And then I thought, maybe I'll do the same thing again, but I'll do the green last. But I decided I'm just going to show you the picture instead. So you've probably have seen pictures while I'm explaining this, and I want to do something else. I want to go in, first of all, with this peach, but it's quite light. So first, I'm going to go in with the Mario primer and prime my eyes so we can start with almost a blank canvas. By the way, these worked beautifully without a primer yesterday. It's just that that peach color is so close to my skin tone, it might not show up. All right, let's go on the lid with the Smith brush. It's a medium size, and these, of course, you can do with the fingers too. 
but I was so impressed with the way this shade looks. It's quite light, so it's not like you see something definitive there. There's just a hint of color. I think this would be great on the brow bone. It would be great inner corner, but you know what I probably should have done? It's just, just trying one of my eyes because I think it actually looked prettier without primer. So here it is just on one eye and it really doesn't show much of anything. Closing the eye, turning it around so you can see the little bit of sheen that it offers compared to this one. It's mattified now. Now I'm taking a smaller Smith, and Smiths are quite fluffy. They are not incredibly dense. I don't know that you would get a different payoff, actually, if you went ahead and did something more dense with these, just because I, I got kind of the same payoff when I used my finger. And I'm just going to put it in my so-called crease. And there, it's super, super subtle. I'm going to do the other side. I have to say, I'm very impressed with these. Just their softness, their sheerness, and yet it does impart some color. The subtlety I really enjoy because, well, for starters, hard to make mistakes when there's very subtle color. It's kind of a wash no matter what you do, and if you're in a hurry, you want something, but you don't have the time to make mistakes, this is the kind of thing you could turn to, especially for spring. It's more ethereal, I think. Now this dark color, I don't really know that I want to do anything with it, to be perfectly honest, because I think it's a little bit too dark for what I want to do, but I'm going to do a little bit of lining with it. I don't know if that's such a great idea because you don't want to put your darkest color right down here. So I'm not. I'm going to go into this green color because it's so, so special. Now this is a different formula than the rest and it is a teeny bit flaky. It's like I think I prefer to just press my brush in like this. It picks up quite a bit but mm, I'm going to do just a little bit inner corner highlight. I'm not going to do the full thing that I did the other day. And I'm really just doing that because I laid down so much and I don't have a proper brush to do what I want to do, which is some lining. Okay, in this position, it's so much more subtle than what I did yesterday, but I do want to line, so now I'm going to pick some up on the tip. I like. So this is a much, much more subtle approach from what I did yesterday, and I think I may even like it more. I don't know you guys, I, I know it's not like a big smack you in the face Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath kind of a thing, but for the moment I'm kind of over it. I feel like we're seeing the same color stories over and over and over again and I was beginning to think maybe that's it, you know? Maybe all the colors that we can do are done. <laughs> We've made them all and there's nothing else to do. And then I was on... Instagram and I saw something I don't know where I don't know how people actually find inspiration on Instagram I do a search for a certain color eyeshadow for instance and I see like 90% stuff I would never do in a million years and maybe something great slips in but I saw something that was the most beautiful kind of a smoky uh, 
I can't describe it, a smoky, taupey, lavender kind of shade that is not very common. And I thought, maybe we're not done with all the colors. Maybe we can still buy palettes, but just not buy the same colors over and over again. And when I think of this, I, I don't think I have these colors. I probably have similar colors in mattes, especially with the peach, but this is kind of making me really happy. It's different, it's ethereal, it's, um, well, as I said, quite sheer. They're beautiful powders and a beautiful color story and probably the prettiest color story that I've seen. I don't know all of them, but I've seen probably three or four of these particular palettes that Chantecai does, and this is the one where I thought, oh yeah, pretty. And there's enough differentiation between the shades where I don't think that has always been the case. It's not a lot of product. So here's my middle finger. I mean, almost takes it up. Here's my thumb. You know what I mean? Not a lot of product. And I was surprised when I opened it up. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But I think it's quite pretty and quite spring. Now, if you wanted to make it a little more spring, you could certainly do the green here or the green all over. If you're not hooded, you could do a beautiful halo with that green. But for me, it would be wasted because I have so much hood. You wouldn't be able to see it. So for me, the first one third to one quarter inside or lining inside like this, I think is the way to approach this particular palette. But I wish, I kind of wish that I didn't prime so you could see this peach on skin tone because it's a very happy, happy color. In fact, I'm going to go in with this smaller brush and put some more on. And I guess I'll do it uh, up, up at the... I never do brow bone highlight, but I just think this color is so pretty. I want it to be seen a little bit. All right, now it's just about what lip color would I want to put with this. Lip color is so tough for me. I know doing a nude is the most common thing, and I kind of get it, because if you don't know what to do, you feel like you're safe with a nude. So let's just do a couple of things. We'll do a nude, and one of my very favorite nudes is the Becca Nude in Dusk. And I love the way it smells. Again, <laughs> I rarely think nudes really do much of anything for me, so this is not the color for this eye. This is a color from Charlotte Tilbury that I haven't used in ages, and these formulas, while they're very comfortable, they don't last a long time. And I got the feeling just from how this is feeling, this is dried up. So unless you find something you're going to use all the time, this is too bad I'm bad, or is it sorry not sorry? I think it's too bad I'm bad. I don't think this is particularly bad, but I do feel it's a little too much saturation, so let's keep on looking. This is a very nice, your lips look better for me. Actually, I think this kind of is a little bit of a better situation, but I kind of feel like it needs a little bit of shine. So let's put a gloss on top. Any gloss will do because this color has so much depth to it. The color of the gloss probably isn't going to show up. So this is a Pat McGrath. I think it's Prima Donna. I think we're getting there. I'm just going to put on my mascara and I'll be right back. Voila, that is it. I have to say, you guys, I've used this now three times and I'm very impressed with the powders. They're a little powdery sometimes if you dig in really hard, but I didn't get any fallout. They're soft without being creamy or emollient. They're easy to work with, and if you have never been here before, I don't like palettes that don't have mattes in them because of my hoodedness, and there are no mattes in this, and yet I feel for spring 
it's just doable as opposed to for instance the Charlotte Tilbury could take the same approach as this in the colorway department and the sheen would be too much where I would just look like nothing but a hood I mean this is freaking me out a little bit how much color I have on the hood but it's just it's not too much I don't think it's very very special and I'm very compelled to look at some more colors from Shantakai. It seems to me, not the quads, those aren't that interesting to me, but they have duos that I might start looking at just because I think this is a very nice formula and I like the way it's not too sparkly, it's not too much. It's not looking to hit you in the face. You're not going to be doing an Instagram eye with this. You're just going to be doing something pretty and spring and happy and take you out of that gloomy, doomy, it's freezing cold, it's snowing, it's sleeting, when am I ever going to see blue sky again kind of a thing. I mean, here we're not experiencing that, but I know in much of the country we are. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope it was helpful to you, and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart. I'm wishing you good health.